The Supreme Court, Harish Salve, uh, arguing. Let's cut across to those images. Challenge brought where Mr. Garg argued that without the uh, Sadr e Riyasat, you could not have the uh, preventive detention law. And your Lordship said state means state as, as exists from time to time. That is my Lord already there. I'll give your Lordship the uh, passage 72 1 Supreme Court cases 536. You have given us para 28. It's there, my lord. It's volume 1, uh, CLC, and PDF. Para 28 there. Para 28. So, this was already one example of how this evolved. And that, my lord, vaccine with the principle of construction, your lord, the attorney just cited um, the uh, presidential reference case, which says, well, if there is a requirement then the, if, if if there is a constituent assembly you must get the recommendation but if there is no constituent assembly are you denuded to the power and the presidential reference what the attorney just gave you a lot of a moment ago the judgment based on a passage on impossibility and your lordship cited with approval craze on legislation the sixth edition In the presidential reference, the attorney just gave it. Yes. I have followed for your lordship's assistance given the ninth edition of Grays. I believe it's attached to uh, my submissions. There's some slight interesting change in the text. Mark. I believe it is at PDF page 37. Uh, this, this is Salve, which is your compilation of it. Well, it's, it's, I believe it has been given along with my note. Is it along with your note, it says? Yes. This is not the from the ninth edition of Craze. It's called Disregarding the Impossible. Para 8.2.9. It is appended to the note. Uh, what page did you say, Mr. Zavi? Page 37 PDF. Yes. Disregarding the Impossible. Yes. Yes. There's a slight difference in text from what your lordships approved, and in fact, it's it's even more uh, instructive. It says one of the ancient maxims of common law is lex is uh, lex non cogi ad impossibilia, as Broom's legal maxim puts it: the maxim, or as it is expressed, impotentia excusat legem, must be understood in the qualified sense that impotentia excuses where there is a necessary or invincible disability to perform the mandatory part of law of forbear. It is akin to the maxim of the Roman law, nemo tenetor ad impossibilia, which derived from common sense and natural equity has been adopted and applied by the law of England under various and dissimilar circumstances. The result of the application of the maxim which remains potent is that the draftsman need not expressly excuse that compliance, which is obviously impossible. So, for example, if requiring a particular communication to take the prescribed form, the draftsman need not generally state that the requirement can be lawfully ignored where no form has been prescribed for that purpose. There may be occasions, however, where the sense of the legislation makes it arguable that the primary provisions are not to operate at all until certain mechanisms have been put to place by subordinate legislation. If the draftman thinks it is necessary to avoid a suggestion of that kind, he will generally qualify a reference to the prescription by if any of that kind. So, Malat, the Principle is very interesting. In fact, we have used it in a different branch, Malan. In service law, for example, we've used it all the time. 
It says your promotion will be as per rules. Now, if no rules are framed, doesn't mean you won't get a promotion. Then you follow whatever is the general principle. But if there are rules, they must be strictly followed. Oh, my Lord, this was the argument um, in, in this court, of course. I, I went through the judgment. It, it didn't get to that point of deciding it. Uh, the old Malad section 80J rule 191J and and the argument was for example if it says deduction of capital employed if there are rules you follow them if there are no rules doesn't mean the exemption fails but there are other provisions which says you will get such other deductions as rules may provide and that you can't operate unless there are rules so we have had Malad these two formats and that is why we come back to why did the framers of the constitution not say that if the president receives a recommendation from the constituent assembly, then he may. And instead say the president may abrogate this article, provided if he gets a recommendation from the constituent assembly. Which if there is not, you must get the recommendation otherwise. Now, this was also made. Just one minute. I'm sorry. In fact, this is a constitution bench which uh, has resumed hearing today on the Article 370. In fact, the center's arguments in the batch of petitions that's been challenging the dilution of Article 370. Here's a center who's argued um, that there's been immense progress when it comes to security uh, for, in the state of uh, Jammu and Kashmir. And it, it, ha it is a union territory. In fact, the Supreme Court raised questions on statehood, when will statehood be restored? When will uh, democratically uh, held elections take place? Uh, these are the questions that the Supreme Court had posed. And now you have the center also arguing on the same on the kind of progress that the government has made so far when it comes to security situation in Jammu and Kashmir. Let me read out uh, uh, some of the numbers uh, that the government has put forth to the Supreme Court. As the Supreme Court now hearing this matter on dilution of Article 370, the center has meanwhile placed some numbers, uh, starting with terror threats that they claim is down by 45.2%. They say that infiltration bids has reduced in Jammu and Kashmir by 90%. Law and order issues has decreased in Jammu and Kashmir by 97%. Security personnel casualties is down by nearly 65%. And in fact, stone pelting cases from 2018, uh, what it was, 1,767 uh, cases of stone pelting that was reported last in 2018. In 2023, it's nearly zero. Organized buns in 2018 last was reported at 52. In 2023, it's zero. These are the numbers that the center has provided as facts to the Supreme Court, while the Supreme Court now listens to matters um, and, and petitions challenging Article 370. In fact, those are the images that we're bringing to you of uh, the, the miss world who's just arrived here. She, in fact, uh, a few days ago was in Kashmir, and that spoke clearly and loudly of the law and order situation that prevails in the Union Territory right now. They feel safe. Uh, it's, it's certainly progressed from what it was to what it is, is what the center has placed uh, on record with the Supreme Court as the Supreme Court now taking up this matter uh, and discussing a petition that asks for dilution of Article 370.